Hey guys, what's up? Welcome back to the channel. Welcome back to a new video. So tonight we're going to be doing an oil change. Uh, I got a few things lined up in terms of maintenance. And the first one that I want to get done is the oil change. Uh, just because I'm at that 3000 mark. I usually am uh, really on top of the oil changes. I do it every 2,500 to 3000 miles. I'm literally, uh, I'm at 3000. I think I'm over by a couple of miles, but uh, relatively very close to 3000. So I'm gonna be doing oil change tonight. I have been getting the oil changes done at this dealer for the past four years. Um, I, you know, just the basic Subaru uh, synthetic oil along with their basic uh, rebranded Subaru blue filters. Um, I haven't had any issues. I've, you know, been using that for years and again, haven't had any problems, but uh, I kind of miss doing my own oil changes. I used to do them all the time on my old cars um, and I just kind of ran out of time. You know, just the convenience factor of going to the dealer, having them do it, not having to get my hands dirty uh, and I was done in, you know, 45 minutes or whatever. Um, you know, just with life and everything and being a dad and, and just life in general just got so busy. So it was just convenient for me. Uh, and I had no issues, but I wanted to get back into changing the oil again. I enjoy the process. Um, and now that I have the car kind of really set up the way I want it, um, I'm really looking forward to uh, starting to change the oil again. So um, again, I've been using the Subaru basic uh, synthetic oil that they use, but I'm switching over to Motul, which is a very recommended and popular oil that pretty much everybody uses or everybody recommends at least. I'm using 5W30. Uh, so, you know, a lot of people can argue 5W40 is better, 5W30 is better. Honestly, it really is depending on what you like, what you prefer, what your tuner likes, what your motor likes. I like something a little bit less thick. Uh, I live in a colder environment, so um, having a little bit less thick oil allows it to warm up quicker in the colder months. And I've always used 5W30 in all my Subarus and I've never had any issues. Um, so I'm just kind of sticking to it. Now, there's a lot of different... Motul 8100s, there's X-Queen, there's X-Queen EFE, there's a bunch of different XS and stuff. The reason why I chose this one is because that is what SMY Performance had. Um, and honestly, I believe between the uh, XS and the EFE, um, the EFE had better results overall, just in terms of uh, testing and everything and how much it was breaking down over time. But honestly, I don't think there's that big of a difference where it really matters which one you go with. Uh, but for me, SMY Performance had this in stock and this is what they're using and what they're selling. So I decided to go with it. Now for the filter, as you can see, I have a Mazda filter. What is going on here? Well, this is actually a better filter than the Subaru one. The Subaru filters that you see uh, that they use on you know, pretty much all their cars now uh, are a rebranded Fram or Wix filter. So it's a very cheaply made, inside is paper. Um, they don't do that great of a job filtering the oil. And uh, back in the day, they used to use a much higher quality filter, which was black. Um, and they did away with it because what they did is they, you know, outsourced, they wanted something cheaper and they just rebranded the Fram Wix, uh, filters to Subaru and that's what they use. So I'm switching over to this one, which is the Roki or Roki. I don't know how to say it. Uh, but this is actually a Mazda filter. It fits on the Subaru EJ motor. A lot of people recommend this one. This is a high quality filter. So I definitely recommend switching over to this one. The inside components are much higher quality. Uh, it'll filter way better um, than the OEM Subaru ones, uh, and it's just a better quality filter. Uh, yes, it's kind of strange that you're using Mazda, but hey, it works. A lot of people use it. Um, now, for warranty purposes, if you're out of warranty, no biggie. But, but if you're really concerned about you know sticking to your warranty, um, you know don't use this because God forbid if something ever went wrong with your motor, and then Subaru went to go look at it and they see a Mazda oil filter on there. Uh, they may have some questions. Just kind of a, a precautionary thing because some people may just want to use this, uh, but they really want to stick to their warranty and not mess anything up. So if that's the case and you're worried about your warranty, stick to the OEM filter, stick to the OEM Subaru oil as well, uh, and you'll be just fine. Now, the last thing I'm actually going to be installing, which is optional, not necessarily something you have to do, but I've always wanted one of these. I never got a chance to install it on my old WRX. Um, this is a Fumoto oil drain. That is the oil change setup that I'm doing tonight. Uh, it's going on my 2017 STI. So let's get started. Uh, I'm gonna jack the car up off camera so you guys don't really need to see that. Uh, I'm gonna put it on some jack stands down here uh, and then we'll get started. I'll probably remove the under tray pan and everything. I'm not gonna really do a DIY on this because there's so many freaking videos on uh, how to change your oil on EJ. Uh, but I'll kind of walk you through as I'm doing it. Uh, I'm really looking forward to doing this. I've been wanting to do it, like I said, for many, many years. I just haven't had the time. And now that uh, things have slowed down a little bit and I'm able to enjoy it a little bit more, 
uh, I'm able to get it done. So let's get started and I'll catch back up with you in a minute. So we are jacked up, ready to go. I got the jack stands. I got preventative just in case jacks on either side as well. Uh, so we are good there. So let's take a look under, see what we're looking at. Everything's very simple to do. Here's the oil filter that we're going to change as well. Uh, right here is the oil bolt, is the oil pan. Um, so very simple, very straightforward. Uh, it's very easy access. Uh, the new FA motors and most newer cars with newer motors have the filter on top, which is really nice. Uh, my E46 M3 had the filter up top, which obviously was an older car, but uh, way easier to do that. But still, this is uh, pretty easy access right there. So while I was under here, I wanted to show you, because I never got a chance to do it, this black pipe right here, that is the cylinder for cooling mod. So I never got a chance to actually see it because, uh, you know, the under tray was on and I had a shop do it. So that hose right there with the clamps on it, that is the cylinder for cooling mod. So really cool to see. It looks like a nice clean install. Nothing's leaking or anything like that, so good. Uh, but otherwise, underneath is really, really clean. You know, while you're under here, it's always a good opportunity to kind of take a look at everything and make sure there's no leaks coming from anywhere or any strange stuff. So everything looks good. Everything looks clean. And uh, yeah, so let's get going. First thing I'm actually going to do is I'm going to go up top and actually remove the uh, oil cap so it allows the oil to flow out uh, a little bit better. I got my oil drain pan right here. Uh, the bolt on the pan is a 17 millimeter, so you're just gonna need a 17 millimeter ratchet. Um, so I'm gonna go ahead and loosen it up. I'm gonna move it slow so I can see it start to seep out and try to remove it quickly. I'm gonna hold the pan up uh, so I hopefully don't get oil everywhere. pretty clean <laughs> so I'm gonna let that drain uh, now I'm gonna work on the oil filter I'm actually gonna show you a trick on how to do this really cleanly okay so to get the filter off uh, it should just be hand tight who knows the dealer did it uh, I do have oil filter uh, strap wrenches so I will use those if I need it but I'm gonna show you a really quick trick this is something that I've done on my old Subarus and it works like a charm um, you know, obviously getting a filter off can be very messy because once you unscrew it, it just kind of spews out on the sides. Get yourself a red Solo cup. I know it seems weird, but what you're actually going to do is actually place the cup over the filter and then you're just going to twist the cup uh, once it's loose and then all the extra oil that's coming off the sides will go straight into the cup. So it's super clean, super easy, um, and it's, you know, very cheap to do. So if you got one of these laying around, I highly suggest using it. Now I'm just gonna put the cup on the filter and then just twist. Now get your pan ready just in case. Should be all right though. There we go. Perfect. So as you can see, I mean, I'll show you in a sec, but filters in there. All right, so there you go. There's that cool trick, filters in the cup. Um, you know, you just want to loosen it enough where you're able to, you know, twist it with your hands. It wasn't that tight at all. I just used a wrench just to kind of break it loose a little bit. Uh, but luckily they didn't uh, slam it on there, so it was easy to get off. So now that I got both off, I'm just going to let them drain for 10, 15 minutes, get as much out as I possibly can. And then I'm going to go and put the uh, Roki oil filter on first. Then we're going to put the Fumoto oil drain on. And we'll be done under here. I'm just got to put the under tray on and everything and then uh, fill it back up with oil. But yeah, I'm going to hang out and uh, listen to some music and then uh, we'll button this up. All right, so got the filter out of the box. This is what we're looking at. It says Mazda, Roki. <laughs> That's how you know you got the real deal. Next thing I'm gonna do, this is something that some people do it, some people don't. 
Either way, I don't really think, think it makes a big difference, but for me, I feel better about it. Uh, what I do is actually fill the filter up with some oil, not all the way, just enough to kind of uh, make sure that the filter and the system doesn't get starved when you first start it up. So I always throw a little bit of oil in there, um, and I also uh, put some oil around the gasket up here. And then I'm just gonna screw it on, hand tight, um, and uh, yeah, then we can uh, put the Fumoto oil drain back on and um, go up top and fill it up. Gonna clean up the filter area real quick. I already did a little, I did an initial cleanup already, but make sure no drips or anything. They're all nice and clean. We're just gonna take our filter and screw it on. Okay. Okay, so now we're going to take the Fumoto oil drain plug uh, and screw it in. I'm gonna clean that up first, just so there's no residual or anything like that. One thing you wanna make sure is the gasket that it comes with, slip it on. You don't wanna use the metal uh, crush washer that you got with the oil filter. You wanna use the one made for this. So clean that up. And then just screw it on. Should go in nice and easy. Update, not using the Fumoto oil drain plug. <laughs> I hardly even tightened this and um, this snapped right off, which is the actual drain where the oil comes off. So whew, I'm, glad, um, I'm glad that happened here as opposed to when I drove the car. I didn't even take a torque wrench to it. I just took my 17 millimeter ratchet just to tighten things up a little bit. And uh, I heard a crack and I thought maybe that was just the um, the gasket here sealing or something and then barely turned it anymore and it slipped right off. So I don't know if I got a defective one or not, but even though it says it's made in Japan, I am not using it. So thankfully the oil change kit comes with a new O-ring. So I got to fish the... Uh, stock oil drain bolt out of the oil, and I'm just gonna reuse that. Simple enough. <laughs> Jeez. One thing that I always like to do after oil changes, I always like to kind of assess the oil, make sure there's no uh, metal contaminants or anything weird in the oil. I was hoping to do a, a Blackstone Lab uh, oil test. I thought I had a kit, uh, but I guess I uh, got rid of it a long time ago. I thought I had one hanging around, so I can't do it this round, but I'll definitely do the next one. Kind of hard to see on camera, but I don't see any contaminants or anything floating around, anything really uh, that's standing out to me, which is a good sign, obviously. The oil is actually fairly clean. I mean, it's definitely used, but it's not super black. Um, but I was definitely ready for an oil change. I, like I said, I had 3,000 miles on this. So definitely suggest doing oil changes as often as possible. Uh, and every 25 to 3,000 miles. Um, but for me, uh, I like to stick to that religiously. So, all right. So I'm done underneath. So I'm going to start filling up the top.
here good. I'm just letting it idle and uh, sit for a little bit and get up to operating temp. Uh, then I'm gonna pull it back in the garage and check the uh, oil level, which everything should be okay. But in the meantime, I'm actually going to reset the oil interval um, on here. So you simply just go into settings, hold enter, and you're gonna go down to maintenance and then engine oil. I already set it, so. And uh, all you gotta do is just click on it and then you can change the interval. I did 3000 set now I'm gonna go to oil filter same thing I already changed it but then you can change it to whatever so 3000 set and you're good to go I'm gonna let it run for a little bit uh, and then pull it back in the garage and check the oil and we'll wrap this video up Kind of hard to see, but we're right on the money on that line. Keep in mind, this is a Renegade Motorsports uh, dipstick, so it's a little bit different than stock, but you want to bring it up to those uh, little hatch marks right there. But kind of hard to see, but it is literally right at that line. Perfect. All right, guys, so that wraps up the oil change on my 2017 STI. Uh, that was a 3,000 mile interval. I'm at 32,000 miles, so I'm good for another 3,000. Recently, since I'm not really driving the car too much these days, um, 3,000 miles is, you know, it takes quite a bit. So I don't know when the next oil change will be, uh, but either way, I'll document it for you guys, obviously on video and everything, just to let you know. So I'm pretty disappointed about this Fumoto oil drain. This thing was like 20 bucks. Uh, I'm not really worried about the money. Uh, but I'm just upset. I really wanted to use this. Um, you know, not that it really uh, is that much easier to do an oil change. It's less stress using these just because once you thread it in once, that's it. You don't have to worry about taking it out again. I um, mean, the chance of you actually, you know, cross threading a bolt in the oil pan is very low because, you know, this just stays in there. And all you do is lift up the lever and just turn it over and it spews out. Super simple, but uh, yeah, so I don't know. I'm not worried. Like I said, I'm not worried about what it costs and the money. I'm just... I really wanted to use it, but uh, so if anybody's interested in using one of these, I don't suggest it because who knows what could have happened. But yeah, the oil change is done. We are good to go. Uh, next up, we are going to be doing the transmission and the uh, diff fluid. So stay tuned for those videos. Uh, I'll probably get to those next week uh, or over the weekend, maybe we'll see. Uh, but I got all the tools and everything ready to go. So we are ready to rock and roll with this. I'm looking forward to doing that. Should be really fun. We'll go into more detail in that video about, you know, all that stuff. So, uh, but yeah, that's it for this one, guys. Thanks for tuning in. Thanks for watching. If you have any questions at all, be sure to ask them below. I'll be happy to answer. Uh, but in the meantime, keep it clean, keep it simple. And I'll catch you in the next one.